Good morning, everybody. How are you? Um, so it's going to be a uh, wonderful meeting today. Uh, so we're going to try to be uh, keep our discussion as uh, succinct as possible, please. We're going to have to make a lot of important decisions, and we have a number of speakers who would like to speak to a variety of issues that the board will be voting on and also will be considering in the very near future. Uh, but we also have uh, an opportunity uh, to do a little celebration as well and a little remembrance. So um, it'll be a good meeting. So if we could begin, please, uh, the hour of 9.47 uh, has arrived. It's Tuesday, September 14th, 2021. And I'd like to call this meeting to order. Could, Clerk, could you please call the roll? Allen? Allen, present. Bates? Bates, present. Berman? Berman here. Brown? Brown here. Davist? Davis here. Ford? Ford, present. Braz? Here. Gums? Gums here. Iqbal? Iqbal present. Kenyon? Here. Caius? Caius present. Kopi? Here. Leonard? Leonard here. Lewis? Lewis here. Martin? Martin present. Molina? Molina present. Sanchez? Here. Shepro? Shepro present. Silva? Silva is here. Strathman? Here. Sergis? Sergis here. Tepe? Tepe here. Wallace? Wallace here. And Winicky, Chairman, you have a quorum. And thank you all for attending today. Wonderful. We now have an important remembrance, and this is going to be the solemn part of our meeting. Um, and I would like to introduce um, Board Member Mr. Kenyon, uh, who will introduce the, uh, the speaker for our Pledge of Allegiance, uh, as well as our prayer. Uh, good morning. Um, Jake Zimmerman, our good friend, is going to lead us in the pledge today. And later after him, Denise Tracy will do the blessing. And she's a chaplain for the sheriff's office. And, uh, it's better than me trying to give it. Thank you, Jake. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jake. You may be seated. I like that already. Good choice. Will you please join me in prayer? Gracious God, whose other name is love, when you created this world and entrusted us with its care, I imagine you thought we human beings would create a paradise or heaven on earth for all of life's creatures to live in with bounty and peace. We keep trying to be better stewards of the world you gave us. Quite honestly, we have had a rough couple of weeks. We ended a 20-year war and remembered a human catastrophe where over 5,000 people perished. Firefighters, law enforcement officers, pilots, federal agents, stockbrokers, secretaries, even wait staff all perished. These folks were someone's mother, father, child, friend, aunt, or uncle. We grieve, we sorrow, we grasp our hands in grief and in anger. Whether those who died were in uniform or private citizens, the world was changed for them, their families, and for all of us. That bright September sky is now filled with images that are inescapable. The date of 9-11 is etched on our hearts. As this board meets today, let us be reminded that we are your hands in this world. Let us practice the concept of tikam olam, where our actions repair the world and make it a better place, closer to the heaven you created for us. What we choose to do, let us accomplish in your name. Let us listen to one another to repair our world and heal it one decision at a time. Mm -hmm. Let this board be a model for loving service that improves and fosters the health of our community. 
Tomorrow is Yom Kippur, the holiest day in the Jewish year. During this time, people are asked to think about forgiving others as a way of asking for forgiveness. How we act, the words we use, the decisions we will make need to be made with compassion and understanding. May this meeting be blessed and may it be a blessing for those who are here, renewed in purpose and dedicated to the health and strength of our community. Amen, salam, shalom, and blessed be. Amen. Thank you, that was absolutely lovely. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy, well done. Um, Thank you for you and your staff's help. Oh. You guys got bailed out, so we got a, a real person to get this class. <laughs> oh, good. You're always welcome. Uh, we always need spiritual advising. It's good for one's soul. Um, and as as we go on to the rest of the meeting and we go to our approval of the minutes, um, to reflect for just a second on the impact of 9/11 and the 20 years. It was a day that shook America. It was a day that changed America, as many of our foreign wars have. But it was also a time, several days after, that America came together. No matter what your race, what your religious belief was, where you lived, whether you lived in New York City, um, Geneva, Idaho, California, we were all one at that point, celebrating the greatness and beauty of the United States of America. And it's something that I hold very dear on that moment, the stillness of love, the stillness of care, the stillness of wanting to make America whole again. So as we approach this important meeting and every meeting thereafter, I hope we can keep that memory, and keep that impression alive in our mind, knowing that together, we're stronger. Together, working as a whole, we can make good, good decisions. So now, could we please move to the approval of the August 10th minutes? May I please have a motion and a second to approve those minutes? Berman moves. Thank you, Mr. Berman. Comes will second. Um, Caius, are there any edits to it? Hearing none, please call the roll. Yellen? Allen, aye. Bates? Bates, aye. Berman? Berman, yes. Brown? Brown, no. yes. Uh, Davis? Davis, yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Raz? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Hopi? Hopi, yes. Leonard? Leonard, yes. Lewis? Lewis, yes. Martin? Sanchez? Molina, yes. yes. Okay, I got you. Molina, Sanchez, yes. Shepro? Shepro, yes. Silva? Silva, yes. Rathman? Yes. Sergis? Sergis, yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Wallace? Yes. Winicky? Yes. Passes? Passes, thank you. Um, and now um, we're going to our public comments, and we have a a lot of people who would like to speak today. And traditionally we limit our conversation to no more than 30 minutes. I would like to ask for your approval to extend that an additional 15 minutes to give everybody at least briefly a chance to address the board. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I would ask unanimous consent that we extend the time for public comment. Thank you, 245 minutes. Mm -hmm. Do we need a second? Yes. Is that 45 minutes per person? <laughs> <laughs> no. Mm. <laughs> Just want to be clear. <laughs> only, only for you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> With great oratory, I hope. All right, so let, let us begin. Um, I've broken it up, and I'd like to, uh, since I have the authority to do that, to bring all topics like topics together. So I'd like to uh, begin with the topics that are going to um, not be on our agenda or may have some concerns, related concerns to the agenda, but not directly to it. And those speakers are allowed to speak for three minutes. Uh, so I want to know if Mr. Wheeler, uh, are you interested in speaking now or do you want to hold your comments to when your issue is brought forward? 
Um, uh, uh, we are speaking on the uh, Monday landscaping zoning, and uh, I could defer our comments uh, until that is considered by the board. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Lori Baker, no, prefer not to speak. Okay. William Worst. Members of the board, uh, you have a handout that was given to you, which is a copy of the letter. Mr. Worst, could we please have your name for the record and your address? Uh, my name is William Worst, 2245 South Street, Elgin, Illinois. Thank you. Uh, in the letter, uh, I have two items, but I, first off, I'm a precinct committeeman for Elgin Township, Fort, Elgin Precinct 14. I'm also the uh, chairman of the trustees of the Cornerstone United Methodist Church, uh, which, which hosts the elections uh, for Plato Township uh, and precincts two and three. Uh, in our most recent election in 2020, uh, I observed several different things that caught my attention. And I was concerned that uh, we think of elections just going smoothly in small town or locale situations. <clears throat> However, uh, that day, our machines went down midday and there was no repair person that sent out to uh, bring them back up. And that greatly disturbed our election judge that was in charge of the facility. And as a consequence, that was the last election that he's been a judge for, he had had it. But what I saw, uh, the machines, uh, the tallies for each of the machines was extremely limited. Uh, I gave copies of those to Mr. Escoval at the clerk's office. And uh, so there was not a complete run of the, what those machines did that day. And that brought up my situation with, uh, how is the chain of custody taken care of with those machines? I did witness that at the end of the day that the machines were wrapped with this ran wrap as normal custom. They did have a, a tag, a, a, a clip that was uh, locking uh, the cases, but no numbers on them that I observed. And I was told that those machines would go to the warehouse to be tabulated there. None of the judges went with the machines. Once they were loaded onto the truck, the truck disappeared. It was going, it came from one polling place and then went to another polling place. So there's no chain of custody there that's observable uh, in this election. So what goes on? Uh, I'm, I'm greatly concerned that I think we need to review the procedures uh, that take place and knowing exactly how these votes uh, get tabulated when they're supposed to be signed off by those election judges. And the reason I say this for the chain of custody, uh, years ago I worked and I was working a, a show in New York City at the Coliseum. We befriended a union member, actually several union members there, and they told us that uh, we were on the second floor of the Coliseum and they said that when we moved our equipment in and out, that we ride the elevator with our equipment going to and from the floor. And it was observed that as we were removing the items that uh, we had to, there's a truck waiting right there on each of the other floors to take stuff off. Right. Thank you for your question. Thank you, thank you. Um, Joseph Zinchuk, would you like to wait? Okay. Mr. Cameron. Good 
Good morning, my name is Paul Cameron. I live at 3810 Ridge Point Drive in Geneva, and I'm speaking um, related to the solar panel project, I believe it's your 21394 under the finance section. Um, as you know, from the communications that we've had with all of you, the neighborhood in our neighborhood and the adjoining neighborhood has significant concerns about the impact that this project would have on our, the aesthetics of our neighborhood. And while we appreciate the efforts that have been made as of late to try to accommodate some of our concerns, there are some significant missteps, I believe, along the way that are causing problems to not only us, but you at this point. And specifically, the amount of money that it's gonna to take to make the site acceptable or practical for the project and acceptable to the neighbors. I understand GRNE is going to do its part to build it, the project for you and uh, as they need to per the contract. But what's not being factored in significantly at all is the aesthetics that this project will take to, on our neighborhood. You're dropping this on a neighborhood of probably a hundred homes that have been there, not before the county project, or before the county buildings, but certainly before this project was considered. And, and while you considered other locations on this property, what was not given significant enough um, thought and work on was the impact that building a solar panel on a hill right across the street from a bunch of homes would have on those neighbors. So I really feel like this project shouldn't be this far along. And I understand it gets pushed down the road by various subcommittees who have all good intentions. I'm for solar, don't misunderstand me, but I don't believe this is the correct location for a project like this in the neighborhood you're trying to drop it into. So I would just ask you to give some serious thought as to what it's going to be like for people to live across from this for the next 25 years not just the economic impact that the megawatt production is going to provide to the county buildings. And I understand that, and I recognize the county is in desperate need of money, but I think there may have been some other way to have done this project that would not have had such a significant impact on all our neighbors. So thank you for your time this morning. Thank you, Mr. Cameron. <clears throat> Linda Gates, Gaska, I'm sorry, my apologies, Linda Gaska. Linda Gaska here. Um, Madam Chair and King County Board members, my name is Linda Gaska. I live at 921 Lake Ridge Court in Sugar Grove. I am here to talk about the solar array number 21394 project. Thank you for taking the initiative of choosing to explore installation of a solar array system behind the Judicial Center for the Kane County government. You are being proactive in taking this step forward in investing in clean energy. As many of you already know, the Climate and Equity Jobs Act, Senate Bill 2408 has passed in the General Assembly and has been sent on to Governor Prisker for final passage, which is more than likely gonna to be tomorrow. One of the provisions of this bill is to curtail greenhouse gas emissions by 40% by the year 2035. That year will be here before we know it. And building the solar array on Kane County government land is a demonstration to our county municipalities, that you are taking this task seriously and are modeling the steps that each municipality must take to achieve that goal. Choosing a solar array system rather than wind turbines is the best alternative for your site and for other reasons. After all, solar energy does not produce either noise or light pollution and can be camouflaged much more easily. We must all sacrifice to save our common home and each other. We can no longer sit idly by 
and expect the wildfires, flooding, droughts, zoonotic diseases, increased hurricanes and tornadoes to just disappear. We must act now and place the well-being of our fellow citizens at the forefront of all of our efforts and our decisions. Again, thank you for seriously considering the Solar Array Project, and thank you for letting me speak today. Thank you very much. Bob Judge. Good morning, committee people. My name is Bob Judge. I reside at 3726 Ridge Point Drive, Geneva, Illinois. Um, I would just like to echo my 100% agreement with the comments Paul Cameron had just a few minutes ago in regards to the solar panel project at the Judicial Center. My comments will be brief. I believe for future projects, county members, county staff, really need to get the residents who will be greatly affected by whatever project you're considering into discussion about how it's gonna affect them sooner rather than after the very first town hall meeting this project conducted just a little over a month ago. The aesthetics of the complex will be totally diminished negatively in my, effect, in my opinion from what GRNE is planning to do. I do appreciate the work of the county in working with the residents of the subdivision and trying to increase plantings, whether it be deciduous trees or spruce type trees on the south end of the complex, which is also referred to as the South Berm. However you vote today, I want you to think about if you lived in a subdivision and somebody wanted to build a two megawatt 4,800 panel and put it right outside your backyard without even bringing you into discussion until maybe the project was about to be passed. I would also like every one of you to vote yay or nay for this project so you're on record as opposed to anybody abstaining from this project. Because I think it's really important how the residents feel that everybody in this committee stands on the project. And like Paul and his wife, Sherilyn, we are not opposed to green solar energy. We're all for it. It's just where the location of this project has been placed. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Judge. The next speaker is Sandra Captain. Good morning. Um, I can sympathize with the homeowner's concerns for the aesthetics of their area. I personally think in agreement with Linda Gaska who spoke earlier, I would be very proud to be next door to that. Um, we are currently fighting drought in our yard in Illinois. Um, I am the chair of Elgin Green Groups and I've been working on environmental concerns for almost a decade now, actually 12 years. And all anybody has to do You've all seen it. Turn on your television. There's, it's still burning in the West. We have, I think the paper said today that there's gonna be expecting 80 million people displaced. 
across the world with as droughts increase and these fires and people can't farm. I grew up next door across the street from my grandfather who was a 22 acre fruit and vegetable farmer. And it's very, very hard to grow and produce a crop when you don't have the soil, the air and the water. Your concerns where you're at aesthetics, I think, I don't see a problem with them. We have a solar roof <clears throat> and some people express concern putting the, the, roof, the, the solar arrays on their houses. And, and that increases your, your property value. I think it's a transition time, a time we have to get used to these kind of things. One of the things I found out studying Project Drawdown, Climate Solutions 101, we can solve 25% of our problems with greenhouse gases by with new sources of electricity, 25%. That's a biggie. It's much harder to do some of the other things like carbon capture and storing those other solutions. And unfortunately now we need all the solutions now and all the time. But I'd like to urge you to think about this. I, if there, I read somewhere in the letter that there were some possibilities of having some trees nearby. I would assume there may be Arborvita or something like that. But I would urge you to vote yes for this because unfortunately, this isn't just going to be our grandkids that face this. It's facing us right now. So please consider what you can do for the rest of the community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Captain. The next speaker is William Cole. Not in the audience. Mr. Cole, are you online? I'm online. I just got to get myself unmuted. And you may have run into that yourself once or twice somewhere. This happened. Here I go, eating up my time. Uh, good morning, Kane County Board members, and thank you for inviting me here to speak today. Uh, I'm going to make this brief. I'm here to uh, in support of solar panel that displays that are going up out there. And uh, I have a sympathy for the homeowners across the street. And I hope that there will be accommodations made to them so that they have uh, some of their aesthetics concerns addressed. But my concern is something else. First, I'll tell you a little story. Just a couple months ago, I watched the video on Frontline, the Channel 11 show on Friday nights called uh, The Paradise, Fire in Paradise, that little town in California that burned down to the ground. And the documentary was interesting, not so much for what, what it showed, but for what, uh, it, what didn't happen is that they had spent a lot of time planning for that fire and actually had written a plan document uh, twice in the course of two years. They thought they were prepared for what was coming. And in fact, they were not. Uh, all the people in the town thought that the village officials were doing everything they needed to do. Uh, the village officials weren't getting too much feedback, so they assumed they were doing what they needed to do. And they're all just totally overwhelmed by what the current situation is and what the current situation is now. Even though you don't see anything happening inside the courtroom, you won't see anything happening on the streets outside, but you still, you know. Uh, second, I wanna mention the this uh, uh, a notice here from the Secretary General of the United Nations. He recounts that the IPC working group uh, uh, report number one is a code red for humanity. This report just came out uh, about a month ago. The alarm bells are deafening. The evidence is irrefutable. Greenhouse gas emissions from fossil fuels and deforestation are choking our planet, putting billions of people at immediate risk. Global heating is affecting every region on the earth. Many of this becoming irreversible. It's pretty intense stuff happening now. And finally, the viability of our societies depend on our leaders from government, business, civil society, uniting behind policies, actions, and investments that will limit those temperatures to just one and a half degrees. And we're on our way to way overshoot that. We owe this to the entire human family, especially the poorest and most vulnerable communities and nations that are the hardest hit, despite being the least responsible for today's climate emergency. And I would uh, pose that that includes children, to which uh, today there's a lot of reports and different news outlets about a, a new report coming out from the, uh, um, uh, blanket on the name of it now, uh, oh, Lancet. So it's Lancet Planetary Health. They have a new report out 
Uh, the value of this new study says it's the largest, most international survey of climate anxiety in young people to date. It shows psychological burdens of climate change are profoundly affecting huge numbers of young people around the world. Furthermore, it's the first study to offer insights into how young people's perception of government's responses to climate change is associated with their own emotional reactions. The implications are distress about climate change is associated with young people perceiving that they have no future no future, that humanity is doomed. This is not like a report of some simple thing happening somewhere. This is insane. Governments are failing to respond adequately with feelings of betrayal and abandonment by government and adults. There are chronic stressors, which we all will have significant long lasting incremental negative implications on the mental health of children and young people. This is not people far away in distant shores. These are our own children. The failure of governments to adequately address climate change and the impact on younger generations potentially constitutes moral injury. Nations must respond to protect the mental health of children and young people by engaging in ethical collective policy-based actions against climate change. And I ask you if you ever drove all the way up and down the length of Randall Road, if you ever saw any evidence that anyone anywhere was doing anything about climate change. I think this solar field is a spectacular evidence of our government recognizing the need to do something and doing it. So I please uh, uh, encourage you all to support this project. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Our next speaker is Jan Manchers. Hello, my name is Jan Mangers and I'm a resident of Kane County at 233 West Park Avenue in Aurora. As a taxpayer, I support the proposed Kane County solar field. It will save the taxpayer millions of dollars and reduce carbon dioxide pollution and our reliance on fossil fuels and their resulting pollution. I also am con um, I, I see the neighbor's concerns and so I support a uh, landscaping um, around the project to help um, address these concerns. I've um, researched other solar panel fields, um, such as Jack Solar Garden. They've demonstrated energy costs, but also produce energy and food in tandem. They grow pollinator support plants. They use volunteers in their efforts. Um, they provide stormwater maintenance. These are possible future um, low impact opportunities for the Kane County solar fields. Um, for more information on uh, Seed National Renewable Energy Laboratory website, NREL. Solar energy is the wave of the future and I applaud the board in considering this action and saving taxpayer dollars. I urge you to vote yes for the Kane County Solar Field. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mangers. Tracy McFadden. Good morning, my name is Tracy McFadden. Uh, I live at 41W754 Bogren Drive in Elburn. Uh, I've lived in Kane County for almost 30 years. I live off Highway 38, uh, just to the west, uh, a little bit down the road from the site of the uh, solar array. I've raised two daughters in Kane County and uh, I've even served uh, jury duty at the Judicial Center there. I am a retired airline captain and an Air Force veteran. Uh, my wife is currently a tenured professor at NIU. I really like this solar project uh, for obvious reasons that will provide clean energy. It will improve the health of so many people in Illinois and it will save us taxpayers money. Um, it's for the greater good of all of us and especially those of us here in Kane County. So I love this. Uh, energy produced by solar is the future. And solar panels are now very commonplace. And we don't wanna see Kane County left behind as this is what is happening. Uh, and we should be very proud that we, the residents of Kane County are doing our part to ensure this for our future generations for a sustainable and clean energy future. I drive past this area uh, uh, many times a week where the uh, proposed uh, solar array will be. Uh, and I can't wait to drive past it again on my next trip to Lowe's, and I have to go through and see those solar panels, um, knowing that they're saving money for uh, Kane County 
and also helping our citizens live with cleaner air. I believe the time is right to do the right thing. We, we don't have any more time. Um, the UN study, which was pointed out here, uh, we are in a code red for humanity. So it's up to us, to everyone in this room, to make the changes to help achieve a better world for our children and our grandchildren. I wanna thank the board members for their consideration on this very important resolution and urge you to please vote yes for this resolution to sign the power purchase agreement for their solar system. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McFadden. Our next speaker is Stephen Morkin. Mr. Morkin, are you online? Yes, I am. Okay, welcome. Thank you. Um, my name is Steve Morgan. Uh, my wife Karen and I live at 3820 Ridge Point Drive, directly across from the tallest Spoils Hill that we see every morning. I've been a licensed commercial broker for 42 years, concentrating mostly on developments in Kane County. During my career, I've been actively involved with the development of vacant land sites for various commercial and industrial uses. And in many cases, the land requires extensive site work to make the project feasible. However, when the end user or tenant makes a decision to move forward with that site, they'd be under the realization that the final project costs will include any such additional site work and therefore result in higher completion costs and subsequent lease costs of a built to suit lease agreement, which is what essentially this is being done. The current proposal to construct 4,500 solar panels on this undulating site sincerely needs to be reevaluated. If a level site can be achieved, a great deal of the spoils can be utilized and relocated along the south border of the site along Britcher Road, which would also include extensive plantings of tall evergreen trees that were proposed by your landscape uh, zoom that I have attended. Um, trees that are hot, tall enough to block the view from the Prairie Ridge residence. I know it was mentioned, however, in the lease agreements that I've seen on emails has a, has a provision that prevents vegetation to be planted that may interfere with exposure on some panels. I think simply that condition needs to be revised in the lease if this moves forward. The additional site work costs typically would be amortized, and in this case, over the initial 25 year lease that would be paid and borne by GRNE Solar to Kane County. As previous Folks, people have talked the, the many residences in Prairie Ridge whose homes are collectively valued between 30 to 40 million dollars. Whatever Kane County can do to protect its residences should be an obvious obligation. And if this can be achieved by increasing the lease payments to the end user, that is the cost of business that any local developer is required to incur when proceeding with any new developments in Kane County. Why should this project be any different? Push this project forward without this consideration, I feel is very irresponsible. Last comment, it bothers us greatly to see that the site has already been uh, brush hogged to clear all the vegetation that was home to countless birds and wildlife. How can this be allowed to happen if this project has yet to be approved? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Our next speaker is Carly Riley. Thank you so much. My name is Carol Riley. I live at 3115 Wagner Court in Aurora, Illinois. For the last 15 years, I've been involved in sustainability in the county with the Conservation Foundation, the Fox Valley Sustainability Foundation, as well as the City of Aurora Sustainability Committee Advisory Panel to the Mayor. Um, I'm here to talk in favor of the solar panels um, for two specific reasons. One is it's fiscally responsible. I know that it will create immediate jobs, which is part of our FIJA and statewide um, initiative for jobs uh, in the energy field. And so that has an immediate economic impact. The second fiscal uh, responsibility is for the cost savings for all the county residents um, 
to save that money for our power, to save our taxes. Um, it seems a fiscally responsible thing. The secondary reason is, of course, environmental. I think King County can take a leadership role in the region to show that we are here for clean energy and can be an example for our other surrounding counties as they pursue or look at options. We can be a leadership role for that. Um, of course, people have talked about global warming and that's a reality. I also work for the Red Cross and we were dealing with multiple disasters. Uh, throughout the country, many of them attributed to global warming. So this is our opportunity to work um, towards reducing that impact. And lastly, I think it will improve our region's sustainability and viability um, as we look forward to um, drawing people back to this to this state. I work with uh, CMAP and there's a projection that while we've lost population now, as more disasters hit the coastal areas and other areas, California and things, um, that we will be drawing back population because of our sustainable and resiliency in our community. So I would urge the board to please vote yes on this resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Riley. Jean Scone. Hi there. I'm Jeannie Scown, H60 uh, North Bennett Street, Geneva. Um, I'm a community organizer. I've taken my turn to be a, a lobbyist for Sierra Club for Clean Energy and Clean Jobs. Um, I also uh, am a, a, a precinct committee person. Uh, I am pro uh, the solar array. Uh, Bill and I had uh, solar on our house in Mesa, Arizona. And in the beginning, you know, people came to us. We lived in a, in a uh, gated community, HOA. <clears throat> and at first, uh, solar was illegal on your roof because of the, you know, it, it just wasn't what they thought things should look like. But you know, when we put the solar up, people did come by and congratulate us on doing solar. Our house was fully solar and they got used to it. And actually I thought they were beautiful uh, for many reasons. I mean, it's, it, it's probably like a modern art display. Uh, I have also worked in, in 2007, I'm a physicist and worked with an electrical engineer and a nuclear physicist who used to be at, at the DOA in Washington. And we created a program where uh, school buildings, the tops of school buildings could be used for solar. Uh, school buildings are usually in the center of community. So this would be easy to hook up uh, uh, with the communities. We don't have time anymore um, to, to wait. Uh, this year, we have our air conditioning on all the time. Uh, it has been so hot outside, it's been hard for me to get into the garden. Uh, we are using, uh, every other day, we are using good, clean, uh, 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 reverse osmosis water on our lawn and our gardens because otherwise they would be ruined. Uh, check out the leaves that are falling right now off the trees in our area. This is not normal. This is early fall because there is not enough water for them. We can't wait anymore. We need to change our ideas of what is aesthetically beautiful and what is not. And we have neighbors who have put things up. We live on the river and we have a neighbor that's building all sorts of stuff. So our view of the river has been mm, kind of blocked, but that's that's what it's like when you live in a community. You need to get used to it. You need to uh, plant things in front if you don't like what's, what's happening in the community. We need to do this and we need to do it now. We don't have any more time. And I thank uh, the county board for bringing this up. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Scone. And our last speaker, and I know we've had uh, several other people who have asked to speak, um, but they did sign up at the last minute, so um, we just run out of time, but your voices are being heard, whether you're for or against uh, the solar array. But uh, Lona Steele will be our last speaker. Thank you, I'm Lona Steele. I live at 100 North River Lane in Geneva, and I'm here to speak on behalf of the League of Women Voters of Central Kane County. The League of Women Voters of Central Kane County strongly supports the 2MW system. The League believes that there should be a variety of energy sources with the predominant reliance on renewable resources. Not only will the solar field provide a renewable source of energy, it will protect the health of Illinois residents, help slow down global warming, and save money for the taxpayers. For these reasons, we urge the county board members to vote to approve the solar field at the Judicial Center. Thank you so much for considering this and thanks for your time. Ms. Steele, thank you, and thank you for your brevity. And we have a few minutes left, um, and I was just sent a note. Uh, we'd like to have one of our staff members read a comment from Sherilyn Cameron, and then that will be it. That'll conclude our, speak our speakers for today. Good morning. I'm going to be reading a comment from Sherilyn Cameron. Um, I won't be able to say this during public comment because it has become too emotional for me. Have you seen the site? It isn't flat. It won't be made flat even with the construction of this massive solar farm. It never will be flat. They will install 4,800 huge solar panels on top of elevated ground, 250 feet from our house. This is the only view we have from our house. We won't be able to shield it. There are no trees tall enough, no fence high enough. The county says that they will plant trees to soften the view. What happens when they find out that won't work for several reasons? What happens then? The 25-year contract will already have been signed. The only view from our house will have been destroyed. Our long-term health will be put at risk. Our house value will be significantly decreased. The investment we have worked our whole lives for. I can't have faith this will work out okay in the end, not for us. The county already made a million dollar mistake on this project. This proposal recklessly made it through the committees for your vote. This is my final plea to vote no. Um, and this is from Sherilyn Cameron, 3810 Ridge Point Drive, Geneva. Thank you. That does conclude our speakers. May I now have a motion and a second to place these public comments on file? Board moved. Second. Board. Mr. Iqbal. Second. And clerk, could you please call the roll? Ellen. Allen, aye. Bates. Bates, aye. Berman. Berman, yes. Brown. Brown, yes. Davis? Yes. Ford? Yes. Raz? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Opie? Opie, yes. Leonard? Leonard, yes. Lewis? Lewis, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Uh, Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Capro? Capro, yes. Silva? Silva, yes. Strathman? Yes. Sergis? Sergis, yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Wallace? Wallace, yes. Winnicky? Yes. That passes. That passed. Thank you.
As we mentioned earlier in today's board meeting with the loss of so many Americans due to uh, tragedy um, at home, uh, we have a number of board members who have served with great dignity, um, who have um, passed on to another life. And instead of doing flowers, um, we have decided to recognize them differently. And I would like to thank uh, Bill Leonard uh, for um, his efforts in um, making sure that we do recognize our former board members who have passed away. So instead, we have uh, developed very uh, fiscally prudent, because we're fiscally prudent here, uh, lovely plaques uh, that are still being created uh, that will be crystal, small crystal plaques that will be sent uh, to board members um, as, as we are aware of their passing. And today, um, I would like to uh, recognize um, Arlene Shoemaker, who, if you remember, passed away in May of this year. Arlene served as the Forest Preserve President from 1990 to 1992 and served on the County Forest Board from 1992 through 1994 and once again from 2006 to 2009. The other board member who has brought to our attention um, is Rudolph Neuenberger, who passed away also this year. He served as a Kane County board member from 1996 to 2008, and I'm sure some of you do remember him. We know that his all of this hard work and dedication that is required to serve in these positions, and it is important and critical that we show our gratitude. So um, those will be sent out, and if you'd like to see them, we'll bring them up to our office once they're created, and uh, you can uh, see them, and we'll just um, do that on a regular basis. Um, as, as need be. Um, the other thing is I would like to um, extend uh, because of the importance of this, and this is with uh, approval of the current uh, sitting uh, chair of the American Rescue Plan Committee uh, to extend the appointments to that committee. And with that, I'd like to have your consensus to appoint, um, and I've spoken to each one of them, Michelle Gums, Mike Kenyon, Bill Leonard and Vern Tepe. So, yes, Mr. Thank you. Second, Berman. Thank you, Mr. Berman. Could we please, please have an aye? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Fantastic. So, uh, gentlemen and ladies, please roll up your sleeves. You've got work to do. We are next moving on to our zoning petitions. I'd like to uh, have the development committee chairman, John Martin, to rise and discuss and take us through this appropriate discussion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we have one matter before us today, which is petition number 4579. It's filed by the Robinson Family Trust. It involves property commonly known as 1299 Mitchell Road in Aurora Township. The proposed rezoning sought is from F District Farming to F District, F2 District Agricultural Related Services. The, uh, it, it conforms to the uh, 2040 plan. Technically, the city of Aurora has objected. Uh, the objection is really in the context of them uh, in current negotiations with the property owner to annex the property to the city of Aurora, not the use itself. Um, the regional Plan Commission had no applicable jurisdiction. The Zoning Board recommended approval with uh, certain conditions. Uh, those conditions, there's a typo uh, indicating that the Development Committee has not yet uh, determined its uh, uh, recommendation on this matter. Uh, the Development Committee, in fact, did recommend in favor of its approval and adopted the Plan Commission's or the uh, Zoning Board's recommendations. Uh, that being said, um, I would uh, move and request a second. Mr. Fry, seconds. seconds. Uh, are, are there any comments or questions? And who's the, uh, okay, the second, Mr. Foss. Yes, Mr. Foss. Mr. Fry. I would just like to mention that this company has been around Aurora for I don't know how many years, but it's got to be 40 plus. Um, they're well respected. And I was very impressed with their site plan that they submitted to the development committee, uh, fencing, screening, uh, very nice layout with all the activity in the uh, back and side of the building. So I think they'll make a, uh, a very good neighbor. Thank you. 
Uh, this uh, is in my district. Name, please. And I have not heard any comments from anyone uh, against it. Your name. Dale Berman. Thank you, Mr. Berman. The, uh, this is an area of Aurora that is uh, mostly in the township, although it's in this particular property is not surrounded by uh, Aurora. It, I think they bound it on two sides. I think that the uh, petitioner uh, would, would like to stay in the county. And uh, I certainly recommend that we approve it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I, I want to add that, uh, please, Mavis Bates, District 4 from Aurora. Uh, the Mundy Landscaping uh, Company has been active in our community for many years and um, philanthropy as well. Thank you. Thank you. We, uh, there are registered speakers. I am presuming that uh, those registered to speak on this are to it. Uh, wanting to address questions and not to make a presentation. Am I correct on that? Uh, the only, the only um, comment that we would make was... Uh, uh, name, please. Um, this is Bernie Weiler. Uh, I'm the attorney for uh, Monday Landscaping, and uh, Wally Monday is with me in the event that uh, there are any questions. But I just would want to make this one uh, comment, and there was a very emotional issue with regard to uh, the solar panel project. And one of the things that I've noticed about every one of those speakers is that everyone is in favor of trees. And this um, property would be two thirds of it would be planted with trees to nurture them so that those trees would then be planted throughout the county. Uh, and then that this land would then be reused again to uh, replant trees. And as we know from our, um, uh, our high school biology courses, uh, photosensitis is really critical in both the uh, cleansing of our air and is also one of the uh, most critical components of getting a control on the um, runaway uh, emissions of, uh, of greenhouse gases. So um, we think that this is a project that will make everyone happy in the county. Are there further comments? Uh, no, and if there are any questions with regard to the site plan, um, we do want to make it, we do want to uh, emphasize that that site plan um, includes uh, complete opaque fencing of any of the uh, equipment um, or uh, operations other than the nursery and horticultural operations uh, that they, that uh, we are very concerned about the aesthetics of the neighborhood and um, also um, agree to uh, all of the conditions that have been established by the various um, uh, uh, administ uh, administrative committees of the, of the county. So uh, we are uh, in agreement with all of those conditions. Thank you. If there are no further questions from the board, would the clerk please call the roll? Alan? Alan, I. Bates? Bates, I. Berman? Berman, yes. Brown? Brown, yes. Davist? Davist, yes. Board? Board, yes. Raz? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Yes. Caius. Caius, yes. Kopi. Kopi, yes. Leonard. Leonard, yes. Lewis. Lewis, yes. Martin. And yes. Molina. Molina, yes. Sanchez. Yes. Shepro. Shepro, yes. Silva. Silva, yes. Rathman. Rathman, yes. Burgess. Burgess, yes. Tepe. Tepe, yes. Wallace. Yes. And Winicky. Yes. It passes. It passes very Thank good. Thank you, Madam Chair. That concludes the zoning petitions. Thank you very much. And we're looking forward to many more trees here in Kane County. <laughs> we'll provide them, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, now, we have a number of appointments from the Development Committee. Who would like to speak to that? Nobody? Yes, okay. There we are. Thank you. These are all reappointments for three of our drainage districts and one of our sanitary districts. Um, under Plato Rutland Drainage District, we have Robert Gerke being reappointed, Rob Roy Drainage District, Scott Jessman, Sugar Grove Drainage District Number One, Jeff Borneman, and the Grand Prix Sanitary District, Teresa Rooney. So I would ask for approval of those reappointments. Leonard, so moves. Mr. Hathman seconds. Okay. Is there any discussion? 
And did you go through Mill Creek as well? That is not one of mine, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, may we please have a vote? Okay. Ellen. Ellen. Bates. Aye. Berman. Berman, yes. Brown. Brown, yes. Davis. Davis, yes. Ford. Ford, yes. Braz. Yes. Gums. Gums, yes. Iqbal. Iqbal, yes. Kenyon. Yes. Caius. Caius, yes. Opie. Opie, yes. Leonard. Leonard, yes. Lewis. Lewis, yes. Martin. Martin, yes. Molina. Molina, yes. Sanchez. Sanchez. Shepro. Shepro, yes. Silva. Silva, yes. Strathman. Strathman, yes. Uh, Sergis. Sergis, yes. Tepe. Tepe, yes. Wallace. Yes. Winnicky. Yes. Did I miss anybody besides Sanchez? All right, passes. And it passes. Uh, Mr. Allen, are you here or who is? Or... I can handle okay. it if you want, Madam yeah, Chair. That'd be fine. Thank you. Yeah, the next appointment is to the Mill Creek Special Services body that's in my district. Um, oh, we, uh, we, we need your name. Uh, Drew Fraz, Thank you, Mr. Fraz. Uh, District 18. <clears throat> um, so traditionally, uh, I have tried to find a local resident willing to serve, uh, interviewed them, and uh, made a recommendation to the chairman for appointment, which happened in this case. And uh, uh, oftentimes, that the person I recommend is somebody who's shown up to the meetings and shown interest in the community, which is the, the case with uh, Tom Zobitz, who I'm recommending today. Okay. Very I'll good. Second that. A second. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Okay, Ellen. Ellen, aye. Bates. Bates, aye. Berman. Berman, yes. Brown. Davis. Davis, yes. Brown, yes. Ford. Ford, yes. Raz. Yes. Gums. Gums, yes. Iqbal. Iqbal, yes. Yes. Caius. Caius, yes. Kopi. Kopi, yes. Uh, Leonard. Leonard, yes. Lewis. Martin. Martin, yes. Molina. Molina, yes. Sanchez. Yes. Shepro, yes. Silva. Silva, yes. Strathman. Strathman, yes. Sergius. Sergius, yes. Tepe. Tepe, yes. Wallace. Yes. Winnicky. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Brown, did you return? No. Yes, Brown was a yes. I'm sorry. Thank you. Passes. It passes very good. Are there any committee updates? Yes. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, Tepe here. Um, in regard to the Public Service Committee, there's been uh, information in the past and concerns about uh, election security. So at the suggestion of Jack Cunningham, I've arranged for a uh, gentleman by the name of Noah Pratz, an expert on election security. Uh, to give a presentation at our nine o'clock meeting on September 23rd. Uh, I'll be emailing uh, some information regarding the background and the topics that Mr. Pratt's will be covering. Uh, but um, a week from uh, Thursday at nine o'clock, um, it would be an interesting meeting for you to uh, all attend, as well as for uh, people in the public that are interested in this particular topic. So thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, John Martin, Madam Chair, um, th this is not the day for further presentations, but I did want to mention the fact that with uh, Grand Flurry, the cross country course, which uh, was a conclusion of a 10 year project initiated by this board in the development committee, uh, they it opened with a flourish of, uh, of at the end of August with a thousand runners and at least that many spectators. Wow. It was a grand success. Uh, there are numerous uh, uh, videos and photographs uh, that will end up showing up uh, at least at, at some point in time in the future. But I wanted to take the opportunity while the activity was fresh to thank everybody that worked on it, in particular, uh, Jody Wolnick and her then assistant, uh, Jessica Mino. Uh, frankly, this project would not have been concluded had not it been for their expertise and diligence. So I wanted to convey that thanks, make the announcement, and at some point in time, we'll have a show and tell. Oh, thank you. Well done, Mr. Martin. Absolutely well done. Yes, Mr. Franz. I'd just like to tag on that, that uh, one of our former board members uh, 
who's passed away way too young was Mike Donahue, and he was one of the people that started that project. Um, so I'd like to acknowledge his, his activities. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. If you can send uh, his name um, upstairs and we'll make sure that we recognize that appropriately. Um, so I, a quick question, uh, if you may know, uh, what is the economic impact that that course is gonna have upon Kane County? Do you have any idea? I don't know that we computed the impact. I can tell you by, uh, first off, it is intended it's in its operational uh, setup that it will be self-supporting as, as an entity uh, with the Forest Preserve, which is now technically the, uh, it's, it's been formally transferred to the Forest Preserve. I can tell you that these races, uh, particularly the uh, the uh, collegiate races, uh, one of which is scheduled for this year. Let, next year, they've already scheduled the Division Three regional uh, regional contest here. Uh, draw thousands of people, and so the anticipation is is that uh, uh, restaurants, hotels, uh, hospitality uh, uh, industry in general will will benefit from it. And uh, and frankly, we have seen. Uh, tons of excitement on everybody connected with the uh, with the runners community that this is fact uh, in fact uh, available and it 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 was intended uh, now I'm making my show and tell which I didn't intend to do <laughs> it was intended to to differentiate from the rest of the world by the fact that you could actually watch the race and in this case uh, from particularly from the summit you could see about eighty percent of the race course uh, which anyone who's been connected with cross country well, know that typically what you see is the start uh, and, and the finish. Uh, so um, again, there'll be a more elaborate presentation, but uh, it, it's it should be should be uh, an, an absolute positive economically and uh, and in the context of service to the community and benefit to the community, and it, it begins to round out that whole sports core out there, which was a commitment made by the county to the eleventh district that were we to have a landfill that would area would be turned into a recreational amenity at its conclusion with tipping fees and no taxpayer dollars. So now you got two thirds of my show and tell. <laughs> and the rest. Madam Chair. <laughs> yes. This, this is Ron Ford. Um, on Friday at our jobs committee, uh, which is at 10 o'clock, uh, we have a gentleman that be coming from the place called the Crystal House in Aurora. Yes. He is a master of uh, engraving on glass, and his 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 products are something to see. So he'll be doing a presentation. He is looking in the future, immediate future, to produce an, an uh, apprenticeship program right here in uh, Kane County. Oh, perfect! And I am familiar with the Crystal House. Um, yep. They're quite survivors. <laughs> yeah. For those veterans, he does a lot of military work. Okay, anybody else? Okay, very good. Thank you. All, all excellent updates. Now we get to the meat of our meeting. Uh, we have, before we begin, there are cookies available um, for all of our audience members. Um, if you'd like to have a snack, uh, we have uh, cookies for you. Uh, so you're welcome to those, please. And we've got water uh, behind you. So, um, Relax, and here we go. <laughs> um, are there any uh, agenda items that you would like to have removed? Madam Chair. Oh, okay, one at a time. <laughs> we'll uh, Madam Chair, way, John please. Martin, item 21-398, 20, please. 398. <clears throat> Let's Mr. Kyos. Uh, yes, I'd like to uh, please um, have item 21394 moved from the consent agenda. Mr. Iqbal? Same number. Same number? Okay, very good. Is there anything else? 
Anybody online? Mr. Kopi, there you are. Hi. Kopi394. Three nine four has already been. Uh, Thank you. Sure. I know there's uh, there's much conversation to be had about that. Yes, sir. That's all to remove. Kenyon moves we approve the consent agenda. Chapro seconds. We're moving it along. Step things to do. Bear with <laughs> move. Okay, I don't mean to uh, to smile. Um, Yes, Mr. Kopi. No, sir, it has not. Okay. Okay, last call. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Clerk, could you please call the roll? Consent agenda, Allen. Allen, I. Bates? Bates, I. Berman? And yes. Brown? Brown, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Ford? Yes. Braz? Yes. Gums? Yes. Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Opie? Opie, yes. Leonard? Leonard, yes. Lewis? Yes. Martin? Yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Sanchez, yes. Capro? Capro, yes. Silva? Silva, yes. Strathman. <clears throat> Strathman, yes. Sturgis? Yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Wallace? Yes, yes. Winicky? Yes. This is, this is very good. Please have a motion and a second to discuss and hopefully approve item number 21 394. Moved. Moved. Yes. A second. Herman seconds. Madam Chair? Yes, sir. Yes. Um, Name, please. Shepro, uh, I've uh, discussed with the state's attorney. I believe there are some technical corrections which we should include as part of uh, the discussion. And I've, I've written it out, but I'll read it. Uh, this would be a motion to amend resolution 21394 as follows. One, change the title from resolution to ordinance, which I'll explain in a moment. Two, replace the term resolution with ordinance and be it resolved with be it ordained wherever they appear. And to add the following whereas clause to the recitals in the resolution ordinance. Whereas in the opinion of the county board, the real estate hereby leased is no longer necessary, appropriate, required for the use of, profitable to, or for the best interests of the county. And I've written it out. I will hand this up to the clerk. Okay, thank you. Second on that. Uh, sir, you can just pass it up. I'm sure we can get everybody. <clears throat> Mr. Sanchez perhaps can take it. All right, there we go. Thank you. So you'll be able to read it for clarification if we need. Um, Can I speak to that motion? Yes, please. Uh, Shepro again. Um, colleagues, uh, the, <laughs> this is all technical stuff. Uh, Section 5-1049.2 of the uh, statutes of the state of Illinois relating to the lease of county property specifies that a, any action by the county uh, with respect to a lease in excess of two years must be made by ordinance rather than resolution. Normally, there's very little distinction between that, but uh, since the language specifically dictates an ordinance, uh, we are proposing, I'm proposing to change that title. Uh, the currently section 1.3 of the power purchase agreement and section, I believe, 2D of the uh, lease, we, we include the language that I've added to the resolution. However, in discussions with the state's attorney, we feel that that finding should be included in the resolution or ordinance or if you things. adopt this uh, itself. One other item that I think is important to point out is that the statute says, the authority to lease shall be exercised by an ordinance 
passed by three fourths of the county board members then holding office. So what that means is, is that uh, one, we had a comment about abstaining. This requires the affirmative vote of 18 members being all of the members holding office. So an abstention or a pass or a present would be the equivalent of a no vote because you need 18 affirmative votes. So I just ask that, that people <clears throat> bear that in mind uh, when they are voting. So for clarification, um, if we were amending a current resolution that's on, on the table, uh, so we have now to approve the edits, the changes in this before we can start actually discussing what may become a resolution slash and or ordinance. Is that accurate? I think so. I think that would be what the state's attorney recommends and I would certainly concur with that. And is this, yes, yes Ms. Mosser? Yes, that's correct. Okay, very good. Uh, so are, are there any questions on this? Yes, Mr. Kynos. So. If I understand this clearly, then we we vote for that amendment. Then we it's required for it's we require a three quarter for final majority. passage or adoption of the lease agreement. Okay. And that's standard with any ordinance. Is that why? What no, it is for? specifically called out in the statute with respect to the lease of property for three years. in excess of two years. Mm -hmm. So it's called out in the <laughs> yes. law that yeah. it is required that we do three. Any As, lease over if I if I may, the county this is section 51049.2. The county board may lease real estate acquired or held by the county for any term not exceeding 99 years, and may lease the real estate when, in the opinion of the county board, the real estate is no longer necessary, appropriate, required for the use of, profitable to, or in the best interest of the county. The authority to lease shall be exercised by an ordinance passed by three fourths of the county board members then holding office at any regular meeting or any special meeting called for that purpose. So what we're doing right now, just so I'm clarified and hopefully everybody else uh, is that we're just changing language at this point and we are voting just to change language. Yes. And this would require, I believe only a simple majority, majority to pass the amendment the amended resolution, which would then be a proposed ordinance, would require a three-fourths affirmative vote. Very good. Is everybody clear? This is simply just to change language. Yes. Okay, clerk, please call the roll. Okay, again, this is just for the amendment to add the, the change language. Ellen? Ellen, aye. Bates? Bates, aye. Herman? Herman, yes. Brown? Brown, yes. Davist? Davist, yes. Ford? Yes. Fraz? Yes. Gums? Yes. Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Yes, yes. Opie? Opie, yes. Leonard? Leonard, yes. Lewis? Lewis, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Chepro? Chepro, yes. Silva? Silva, yes. Rathman? Yes. Sergis? Sergis, yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Wallace? Yes. Winicky? Yes. It passes. Okay, very good. So change to, it is now as an edit, as amended, as amended ordinance number 21-394. Okay. And the whereas, uh, For, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll change that mm -hmm. um, as appropriate. Now, is there any discussion? Uh, yes, Mr. Copey. Thank you. I, I would like to offer an amendment to the ordinance and uh, whenever you're ready for that. And I do have copies available. You have to do it now. We need a second for that, please. Well, I'll second. You have to read the, I, I think that'd be a really good idea. Oh, okay, you thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't need this. I have this. Um, this uh, Put the this, mic closer to you, sir. Thank you. This idea was spurned by the fact that uh, there was language within the resolution that uh, directed 
savings of money um, to be quantitated into the administration department. And, you know, therefore circumventing all the budgetary debate or and or requirement. So with no further ado, I'll read the resolution, the amendment. Whereas the state of Illinois has passed a comprehensive renewable energy mandate that will offer incentives and guidance pertinent to future policy to be acted, enacted by the Kane County government in regards to renewable energy. Whereas Kane County, by condition of circumstance, will experience a significant cost reduction of electricity expense by attrition of this renewable energy proposition and or future propositions. Whereas Kane County will experience a greater demand for insight, understanding, engineering, and staffing for similar renewable energy projects, not limited to solar, whereby departmental budgetary stress will avail. Whereas renewable energy resources will become a new sub-department under the direction of the development department and dedicating a minimum sum of 50,000 per year of subsequent savings to be attributed to the strict use and creation of the renewable energy performa, not limited to licensure agreements, franchise agreements, and net producer of carbon credits where values and price structure are the same will be determined and potentially sold for the purpose of generating revenue for the people's government of Kane County. And I do have copies if anybody would like one. Hopefully I can get a second. Um, I believe that Mr. Kopey, that entire um, paragraphs that you have just uh, spoken will be added to our resolution. Is that what you're proposing? Ordinance. For the ordinance, I'm sorry, for the for the for our ordinance number 21-394. Yes, ma'am. Do I have a second? Kenyon will second it. Thank you. Mr. Iqbal. Uh, Madam Chair, um, while I may agree with the proposal, The microphone. I'm sorry, we can't. I may agree with the proposal. Um, uh, I believe this should go to a committee. Mr. Mr. Iqbal, my apologies. We cannot hear you. We want to make sure it's recorded as well. Okay. Could you hear me better? That's oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, this subject probably should go through a committee, a finance committee or energy committee or both, uh, and then come to the board rather than come. This resolution that we have, our ordinance that we have, is already complex. So having more discussion today would simply won't take us anywhere. I, uh, we have this procedure to go through the committee. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Kaios? I would uh, uh, agree with Mr. Uh, Iqbal and uh, move to table to committee. Surge is second. Parliamentary inquiry, Shapro, which committee? Which committee? Uh, what do you, does, it make any does it make any difference? Committee. Yeah. 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 Committee. If you're just going to table it, it should be admin. It, it doesn't, Let's, you don't have to admin. specify. Okay, I, I'll just table it then. I'll modify mine. Let's do public. It's on the admin. Oh, we don't want the whole thing. Okay, so we are now tabling that. Um, it goes to vote. And may we please have the vote? Point, Wait, point yes, of order. Mr. Tappy. Clarify, please. That only tables the amendment. Correct. It does not table Correct. the ordinance. Correct. Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we have to vote to table uh, Mr. Kobe's suggested amendment to ordinance number 21 394. And who second that? Okay, thank you. Point of order, Madam Chair. Yes. Can we pass the resolution and then come back and amend it? Add an amendment. 
I'll let the state's attorney. It would attorney. be awkward and convoluted. Well, that, that's it, kind hold of on a second. Let our state's attorney speak correct. to Correct. So I, if we're passing it, it wouldn't be coming back and amending it. We'd be coming back with a new resolution at that point. So it, next month there'd be a new resolution or a new ordinance. Correct. Correct. Well, this would be this would be a resolution because we are forming the budgetary requirement for this. So this would be an, an, an oh, a resolution an okay. related to. Okay. Yes. I would like to ask, uh, for I was speaking, I would like to ask Ms. Wolnick if um, a 30 day or more delay would affect our uh, timing on the project. Can I uh, point of uh, order? Is there? Is, we, okay, no, wait a minute. There's no discussion. That, that There's no discussion. We that, have, huh? we're still okay. at the point of discussion with the resolution. We have to pass that through yet. The amendment to our ordinance. And there's no, no discussion for table. It has now been tabled. Okay, so, yes, okay. Go to vote. We, need, we need to vote on the table. Okay, this is to table Mr. Caius's no. amendments. No, Mr. Kopi. Kopi, I'm Kopey. sorry, I am Stag so sorry. Kopi, 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 let me get it right. The K's. <laughs> okay. This is to table Mr. Copey's amendments. Uh, Allen. Allen, aye. Bates. Bates, aye. Berman. Berman, yes. Brown. Brown, yes. Davis. Davis, yes. Ford. Ford, yes. Fraz. Yes. Gums. Yes. Iqbal. Iqbal, yes. Kenyon. No. Caius. Caius, yes. Copey. No. Leonard. Yes. Lewis. Yes. Martin? Martin? Yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Shepro? Shepro, no. Silva? Silva, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Sergis? Sergis, yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Wallace? Wallace, yes. Winicky? Yes. It passes. So the potential okay. resolution has now been tabled. Okay. Thank you. That's bringing that up. All right, so now for clarity, uh, we're back to uh, resolution or ordinance, my apologies, 21-394, and it is open for discussion as, as amended. Chris, don't all speak at once. Yes, sir. Serge is here. Um, Madam Chair, I am, you know, this has been debated, discussed, rushed, detoured. And, and, and at this point in time, I have to be honest, I'm not really quite sure what I'm voting on. An ordinance to enter into an agreement, and does that agreement outline everything that's going to happen? Or is this just an agreement? Are we voting right now to enter into an agreement with a contractor to build a facility that we've not yet outlined because it hasn't gone through engineering yet? My point being, I am 100% and, and, and have verbalized this to Mavis that I am 100% in support of the solar farm. However, I've listened to the residents and the hill that we're talking about is too high. And it has been suggested to me that an alternate has been found, yet I've not seen that, heard that, can't substantiate that. So I'm confused with what I'm voting. And I don't want the wrong signal to be sent. The signal is clear. We want solar, but in support of the residents who will be looking at panels up on the tallest part of the hill, I would like those brought down to, to, to help them a little bit. You know, further, I would like to hear whoever is the district representative for that, what they might have to say regarding it, because these are my, I'm, I'm in Gilbert's, these aren't my constituents, and it's, you know, I, I I don't want to be stepping on somebody's toes if I'm out of line, but those are my concerns and, and I'm unsure as to what it is I'm being asked to do today. Um, yes, yes, please, Mr. Nice. Mr. Caius. Caius, our task today is quite simply to approve this agreement so that we can proceed to work on the many details that will be required to bring this project to fruition. Details that cannot be addressed by engineers until this agreement is in place. I wanna make sure I got this right. Well, oh, so you. we have to pass these agreements. A wise man once said that uh, if we try and work on all the details in committee, Mr. Martin, we end up with a camel instead of a horse. 
Uh, here, and I will remind the committee that we are not here in this meeting to hash or rehash those details again uh, that cannot be defined until this agreement has is in place. So the agreement has to come first, otherwise there's no financial thing or agreement that can follow. We're not here to determine whether there's glare from the solar. We're not here to determine if both photovoltaic energy is safe. We're not here to define exactly which plantings will be best to improve the aesthetics of the site. Our board members and staff have worked diligently and will work with the neighbors on that. We're not here today to, to we're not here today to determine the soil height. We can't do that. That cannot be determined until it has been engineered, and we cannot have it engineered until we approve an agreement. We're not here to go through the contract and vet each line of item to determine if it's appropriate. Our staff and the attorneys, state's attorneys, has done that and with the help of Mr. Uh, Shepro, apparently as well, has approved this agreement. <clears throat> uh, and those board members that have questions about whether it should have been, little items should be changed, had plenty of access to the state's attorney prior to this meeting. And I certainly would hope that they would have done that earlier. Uh, we're not here in this meeting to determine whether the materials that are to be used are produced, where it's produced, how it's produced. This is a policy decision that will be and should be, I think, addressed, that we should be buying things that are appropriate uh, in deference to the Chinese. Uh, but this is beyond the scope of this meeting. We're here to approve an agreement that will potentially save the county over $5 million in the next 25 years, reduce carbon, and help this country reduce the effect of global climate change. Madam that Chair Sergis. Yes, Mr. Sergis. No? That's almost as if we rehearsed this <laughs> and I did not call Commissioner Kaios on this whatsoever. I deny working with Sergis ever. That's it. That's it. So, but not true. But truly, thank you because I I want the message sent clearly. I, I am absolutely in support of this, but there are details and concerns that need to be addressed. So whether as, that was from you or the chairman of, of energy. As per Mr. Martin, Ms. Kent, if I'm relying on his experience as well. He's done a number of these things. We can't have it as until we approve this. Um, I believe I recognize Mr. Martin. If I'm gonna be quoted, I guess I'm gonna speak. <laughs> uh oh. What, we're, what we have before us today is a contract. We have a lease to approve. We, have, we are agreeing to a project. We are agreeing to a fixed set of standards. As with any project, there are nuances that, that, that change as, as soil conditions are found or other else, but this is not just simply a vague beginning. This is in fact a contract to move this project forward. And we need to understand that. And we need to know that it's never gonna move forward if in fact we don't enter into a contract. Anybody who has ever built a house or done anything else knows that in the course of events, <clears throat> questions arise. I don't, I don't, I think that we cloud the issue when we sit and talk about all of the things, quote unquote, all of the things that need yet to be resolved. This contract has not been rushed. This has been, this has been a, a process that began first part of the year, if not before that. We've gone through all of the standard uh, proceedings and procedures relative to getting bids, having the contract reviewed. We have done this in, in numerous occasions since all of us have been on the board, and this shouldn't be treated any differently in the context of a contract. We have a deal that we're either going to approve or reject today, um, and we need to understand, and we need not, we should not treat it um, as, as if, it's, if it's sitting here as kind of a vague, foggy unknown. It's the same deal referring back to the, to the, the Settlers Hill cross country course. We entered into contracts and that course took four years to build. And during the course of that four years, a myriad of things happened. We had an undue amount of rain. We had to change how we acquired soil. We had to do other things. That's just the life of a contract. Mm -hmm. This is a firm deal that we're, we, should move, we should move forward on. Can we call for a question? Um, <clears throat> a couple more comments, please. Hey, uh, before we get to the name, please. Mark Davist. <laughs> Thank you. Just so I'm for clarification before we get to the freshly clarified agreement part. <clears throat> thanks, 
to Mr. Sergis, Mr. Caius, Mr. Martin. We're team. <clears throat> Isn't the first vote the rebranding, if you will, from resolution to ordinance? That's already done. We did that. We yeah. did that. Uh, okay. We did that. Okay. Oh, I'm good then. I, I thought we skipped that part. No, y'all fine. Madam Chair. Yes. Lost sir. in the show. Yes, we got yeah. lost. I, yeah. Todd Wallace, uh, District 13, and um, the most of the people who have spoken uh, live along Brisher Road are in my district. Um, and uh, there, there are very few comments that I have not uh, agreed with that have been made about the importance of solar power, the importance of, of, a, of solar energy in the future. Um, I, I, I could not agree more. And um, I, I think that uh, the issue uh, that, that was just brought up regarding the contract, I agree uh, 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 about moving forward on a contract, but the issue that I have, um, I, I think that there's an underlying fundamental ambiguity with, with this project. And that underlying ambiguity didn't come into light until we actually saw plans and found out that we have a 30 foot high hill in the middle of the project. Um, and that, that's a real issue. It's an, it's an issue for the neighbors and I think it's an issue for engineering uh, that's gonna come to light. Uh, so, I, I mean, I, I would support an amendment to the ordinance stating that there is a you know, elevation certain above which solar panels cannot be built um, if, if the chair would entertain something like that. Um, but uh, without that, I don't, uh, I, I, I have difficulty supporting it. I'd like to bring up Ms. Walnut to address that, please, before we go further. Thank you. Um, in the um, lease agreement, there is a statement that the uh, North Berm is not to be any higher than an elevation of 768. This is based on the elevation of the South Berm um, that uh, really well screens the area with vegetation placed on top of it. The panels are seven and a half feet high. So the highest panel would be um, 775.5. Uh, Madam Chair. And we have an example, I believe the panel in the back of the room. <clears throat> Or just to clarify, and I've um, I, I apologize for sorry, not, name again, please. Oh, I'm sorry, Todd Wallace. Um, just to clarify, based on our uh, King County GIS maps with uh, topography, the hill currently is the sorry the North Berm currently is 790 feet tall. That's correct, and GRNE will be lowering it 20 feet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, sure. Mr. Foss. Yeah, just um, I, I wish we had the slide up that uh, staff made of the ultimate screen of the plants because it's very uh, convincing. Um, <clears throat> but just a couple of points on this whole issue. I've sat through that, all the that meetings. That can be arranged. Yeah, can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, the landscaping plan. Yeah, the the one that shows the concept of the screening of the neighbors. That one. Yeah. Okay, that's it. So this this is computer generated. Um, and a couple of things to mention, some of the trees exist and some of the trees do not, some are proposed. And Jody has told me that when it comes time to plant the new trees, they will actually work with the neighbors and stand on their deck and spot them exactly where they make the most benefit. Um, the blue you see in the background is the proposed panels. Now, a couple of important things to notice here, the uh, panels were purposely shown in bright blue so you could see them. Uh, we have one over here and you can see it's actually black. Uh, so this was done just for the, the purposes of the, of the exhibit so people could see it. And I also understand they're going to be oriented more to the east than to the south. So this is kind of a worst case scenario. So I would ask as you vote to keep this in mind. Um, but just a couple of points the, you know, obviously $5 million in ultimate energy savings. Um, I think it's also important to note, even though solar wasn't shown as a, a particular um, use on the campus, you know, we, it's our campus and the master plan and the campus predate all the neighboring subdivisions <clears throat> and home purchases and the way the homes are oriented. Uh, extensive effort and dollars have been committed to this plan that you're looking up at up there. 
uh, to help appease the neighbor's concerns. And uh, Cliff, just to address, Mr. Sir, just to address what you mentioned, um, there are detailed concept layouts. Um, so we're not just hoping to design something on a napkin in the future. Um, this is very well laid out and Green has actually reviewed it and signed off on it. So what will happen next, as with any construction project, you'll move from concept layout to final engineering. And that's where the, every, every little minute detail will be laid out. And if something arises, then we'll have to deal with it. In, including the landscaping. Including the landscaping. But tree by we'll tree. be working with the neighbors. I've personally committed to them. Um, we'll be working with the neighbors through this whole process. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, if I may. Uh, yes, sir. sir just, um, my statement is, you know, I have not reviewed the comment, uh, the contract to see where those details are regarding whose responsibility this will be. But I do want to comment that um, I have seen uh, Mr. Fraz in action working with neighborhoods and his commitment to our constituents and making sure we have the very best for them is unquestionable. So if, Drew, if you're comfortable with this moving forward and you think those protections are in that contract, then I'm, I'm happy to move forward with this. If, if in your heart they're not, then we shouldn't be right now, so. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Copey, I believe you've been waiting and then Mr. Iqbal. Thank you very much. Uh, if you m wouldn't mind taking Mr. Iqbal because uh, first, because some of my response has to do with uh, some discussion I've had with Mr. Iqbal. So you yield to Mr. Iqbal. Very good, Mr. Iqbal. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Um, is it better to sit down? Or I, I, sit could, down. If you could sit down and just bring it up closer. Yeah, Simply. I request, uh, yeah, I request IT. Second, here we go. We'll get you a mic if you'd like to stand. Thank you. I'd rather stand up. Here you are. Um, I request the IT department that uh, they put the two slides that I sent them about the amendment that you saw and state attorney saw and they commented. And I would like to propose those two amendments uh, into this ordinance. Uh, and I will want to provide a background to it. So you are proposing a revision to this current ordinance, ordinance uh, number 21-394. Yeah, to the contract. To the contract or to the ordinance? Uh, to the contract, which is which will become part of the uh, ordinance. Okay. I think without contract, the ordinance is nothing. <clears throat> Give me just a second. Uh, State's Attorney Mouser, may we start revising the contract at this point? That is, I don't believe that we can at this point for the contract. I think that's something that we can try to have further discussions on, but I don't think we could amend the contract at this point in the stage that we're in. I, I would agree. We, we have flexibility with the ordinance, but not with the actual okay. contract because that has to go through they're, as you were well aware, the company, they have to review it. Then it has to be reviewed by our state's attorney um, for approval. And by step, yes, sir. I'm sorry, can you speak in a little louder, please, sir? Does that work? Yes. Uh, I, I would just ask for clarification as to why, since the lease has not been executed, I'm not sure I understand why we could not. It may be cumbersome, it may not be desirable, but. I think it's legal for us to propose uh, amendments to the contract at this point. It hasn't been approved. So I would, I would. respectfully suggest that the uh, Mr. Iqbal should be permitted to present his motion and see if it gets a second. And I, I will defer uh, to our state's attorney on that matter. So again, I agree that we need to have a discussion and that we haven't entered into the contract at this point. And those are discussions that we can have. I just don't know that this is the time to do this in the county board meeting. I think that prior to actually executing the contract, we can talk about how any changes that we need to make in that. And if that discussion wants to happen now, I just don't know that it's proper for the to amend it now. <clears throat> And so my question is, um, uh, Madam Chair, what does this ordinance do without the contract? 
what's the value of it how can we were being rushed i i and i use the word rushed to get to this point and approve this contract and the lease and this is the legal document this is not a memorandum of understanding <clears throat> It is my understanding, and again, I'll ask our state's attorney, that why I will approve the ordinance, I will also approve the contract. And my signature goes on that. So exactly. that contract can be amended and approved, go through the protocol, uh, through the company, um, as well as through our uh, legal team to reflect those changes that is correct. And, and part of this is we've entered into negotiations with them. So what is being presented now is what we've negotiated. Again, we can come back and continue those negotiations prior to the chairman finally signing it, or we can propose amendments at some point. It's just now in the county board, what we're looking at now is this ordinance to vote that will eventually allow us to enter into this contract for the lease as well as the power purchase. Point of order, Madam Chairman Shepro. Uh, Mr. Shepro, uh, give me just a second, Mr. Martin. Uh, this, uh, I find, I find myself discomforted by, in, in all respect, due respect intended, in suggesting suggested changes to a contract when this contract has been floating around here for months. I, I know that I know that that Mr. Wallace has reviewed it in contact in great depth. I know that Mr. Shepro has, has has been involved with it. And at at the time of the final vote to suggest a substantive change or any change to the contract, um, it, it, to me, it, it's just it, it puts us in an awkward position and we ought not do it with this or any other this is it's not like this hasn't been available for comments um you know, the purpose of these meetings in my mind has always been to vote yes or no in favor of a set of circumstances that has <clears throat> has gone through committee that has been in, in investigated and we are now the issue whatever it might be is ripe as it comes before us and we when to, to make to suggest fundamental changes in underlying documents at this point in time it just kind of kind of ignores the process that 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 got us here we this has been before at least at least two committees if not three it's been three. before energy environmental it's been before development it's been before finance administration and, admin. and administration and, admin. and to walk in today with substantive changes to me uh is is i don't want to use it violative but it, it doesn't it doesn't adhere to the process we've all had our chance and I think today we ought to vote on it as it's as it's been presented. And if we don't like it, we vote no. And if we like it, we vote yes. Okay, thank you. So what are point we, of order? Point point yes. Um, I guess I agree uh, with Mr. Martin uh, substantively, me, me, please. Shepro, uh, but I, I don't know that because. Uh, we've got good reasons why we shouldn't be doing it. it. It means that legally, Mr. Iqbal doesn't have the right to make his motion. So I would ask the chair, is your ruling that Mr. Iqbal's motion is not germane and cannot be considered? So if I, if I may, Jamie Mosser, part of the issue that we have is as this was a negotiated contract, any changes that are going to be made could then prohibit the deal right. later on. So procedurally, if this board, if Mr. Iqbal can go ahead and make his motion, there needs to be a second, obviously, for that motion. So he can uh, make his motion, present what it is that he would like. There would have to be a second, and then we would have to proceed from that point. We are advising you, though, that as this has been negotiated, this doesn't mean that if there's a change that's made that it's accepted down the road. And the contract can be negated. Correct. Which means the project would be stopped. Yes. So I think procedurally, then obviously, Mr. Iqbal has made his motion. I think he now has to have the you have the opportunity, obviously, to talk about what amendment you would like to make. And then we'll see from that point about a second. OK, so please, sir. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, I, um, if you have the other page, <clears throat> um, the, the other one, one next to it. Okay, good, thank you. I will present only two uh, amendments or suggestion, whatever you wanna call it. Um, well, we are going into contract, but we, are, we have neighbors who are living next door and they are concerned and they have a, a constitutional right to live in their property free of disturbances and free of interference. And these panels, the way you showed it, would interfere with their uh, living uh, through glare, what is called reflectivity. And I looked into that and that's a constitutional issue. Um, good part is that um, this, this contractor, this supplier uh, says and warrants that the, the panel that they are gonna pre install on this site would have no glare. And we wanna put that thing in the contract. This is the warranty, this is the representation that the contractor has made to our staff, to me, and that we want to put it in the contract. That will protect us later on for any constitutional uh, complaint against us. That's number one. Number two, I believe the RFP was done wrongly. It has shortcomings. It has eight or nine amendments. And there is one thing that was done wrong is put the burden of the fence on the south side on the county without knowing what it is. And then we generated these um, a photo, computer generated photo that shows um, panels, which they say is not, are not correct. They should not be interpreted. And they have, these photos have given a lot of fear and generated fear among the uh, residents. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I would, the second amendment is that we should have a fence on the south side that will be generated, that will be done by the contractor, whether it's a berm, it's a wall, it's a tree, whatever it is, it should be done by him based on his layout, the way it suits him. But that fence should be tall enough, there should be no panel visible from <clears throat> resident's window and one foot higher. So the residents cannot see any of the panels. I think these are reasonable. Uh, if they have not negotiated, I, I believe it's, it's a malpractice. Okay. Um, Thank you. Do I have a second? <laughs> I'll second it, ma'am. Tom Copey. Mr. Copey, okay. Yeah, but no. if I may. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I would like to second it back up a little bit with one condition that <laughs> the term glare and reflectivity are not synonymous. They are two different phenomena. And I think the concern is probably reflectivity. And we can solve that problem uh, while we have debated not to debate during our debates um, in, that, in that we live in this 42nd parallel and the angle of, of, uh, of ray of the sun will be approximately 50 degrees and uh, the, uh, the panels can be adjusted at high noon to, uh, to hit, um, hit that just about square at 90 degrees um, or uh, one, one, 180 degrees. Straight on, I should say. Now, in the late evenings and early mornings, the sun will have a different angle, and um, the adjustment of the panels can be considered, and you can eliminate the, the reflection completely uh, from going into the houses. As far as glare, I don't think that this is pertinent to the discussion completely, uh, since uh, glare exists everywhere. We have glare when we're driving. We have glare from the neighbor's kid's wagon. We have glare from the bumpers of the cars. And, uh, and uh, 
And I don't think that is pertinent to this discussion. Uh, but I would second the, uh, the, his uh, amendment to consider uh, everything that he has suggested and uh, hope for the best. Thank you. Before, I, I thank you because I have this. That's what I was going to ask. Thank you. So you've heard the comments. Can you, uh, would you be in agreement to revise your motion to remove glare to um, reflectivity? Yeah, that's correct. I, I agree. Okay. So shall have any re reflectivity radiating? Is that, the, is that the wording we're looking at here? Out into the atmosphere. In case of any reflectivity radiates out of the leased premises, seller shall promptly cure the breach of, at its expense. Okay. All right. We've got, I know I'd like to answer that question because we have a potential demonstration to talk about the reflectivity of that particular panel. Yes, sir. Prize speaking. Um, I, I just have a real concern. I'd like to hear staff's take on this, but the, the fence was never intended to be a part of the screening process. Um, the fence is there for security. Okay. So that's why it wasn't shown on the screening exhibit that we just had up recently. So to say that the fence has to be high enough to screen this would be, uh, you know, 40 feet tall. That's why the trees will ultimately be that tall. Uh, so it's really not a, an appropriate change. And if it, if it, if we were to pass this, we'd be asking somebody to build a fence that is impossible to build and impractical to finance. <laughs> so it's, it's just something that isn't appropriate. Okay. We have, would you like to bring up, excuse me, would you like to bring up staff to talk just, about? If, if and, Joe, was I, am I correct in that statement, Jody? I'd like to bring up Jody Walnick, please. And I need your name, please, Ms. Bates. Mavis Bates. That statement is correct. Um, it's a seven foot fence and the preferred option at this point is a decorative aluminum fence that would not screen the facility. Jody, uh, Ms. Walnick, would you like to read your statement now? Um, um, to do I, the I, I would defer to Madam Chair. I think I am partially reading it as I'm answering these questions. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, we have a question regarding reflectivity. Is there anybody here that could uh, that could speak to that? I, I can. Of the I, panels that are going to be installed. Certainly, and I can defer to Eric um, from Green um, also. Uh, the entire goal of the solar panels is penetration, not reflection. That's a statement directly from the panel manufacturer. This is why the FAA allows solar fields to be located near airports. If you drive around the county and look at community solar projects or panels on residential roofs, they are matte in appearance. There is no discernible glare from the panels. In fact, we have a panel over there in the corner. You can see um, there's a very little uh, glare or rec reflectivity is the, the term we're using. Um, the Canadian solar panels have less than a 4% reflectance value in the east-west direction for this project. The panels are not pointing ever in the direction of the south neighbors, and so there's zero reflectance in that direction. Um, the military's requirement is a 10% maximum reflection for um, airports and uh, airplanes, and Chris Allen, with his military experience, is here as well and can speak further to that if uh, you so desire. Uh, um, yes, Mr. Allen, please come up and we can uh, then finish this conversation about reflectivity. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, as many of you know, I'm a career government employee. I used to work with the FAA that uh, Ms. Wolnick uh, referenced. Um, at this time, I'm going to make it clear that I no longer speak for the FAA and or the DOD. I'm not employed with them. Is that is that proper? Um, Good idea. A good legal solution. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, <laughs> yes, as a former employee with the FAA, um, I can speak to their mission, and that is 100% safety and security of uh, aviation in this country and abroad. Uh, they take it very seriously. So if the FAA has set up a policy that, uh, <laughs> quite frankly, basically referenced water glare as their limit, um, that's acceptable as well as the DOD. Um, 
they uh, have a high uh, mission. Their aircraft are very expensive. And just like uh, civilian and commercial aircraft, they're carrying uh, human, human transportation as well as cargo. So if those both organizations have set standards, which these standards here for this project fall below that, I think that would be acceptable. Okay, and that is the federal aviation administration, yes, under the Department of Transportation. And DOD is? Department of Defense. Thank you very much. And I'm sure I think I still have the floor. <laughs> Are we all done with Mr. Kaios? I mean, Mr. Kaios, I'm Alan. sorry, Mr. Yeah. Allen. <laughs> Do they look alike? <laughs> I think you just disowned me. <laughs> <laughs> no, just I evict you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Yes. Yes, I would say like to say that in light of all the research that we have done on this um, contract and everything that has happened in the past during two E and E committee meetings and admin and exec and not to the board, these two points are moot and irrelevant to the conversation at hand. Uh, there is no glare. We've proved that over and over again. The pa the panels will be mostly. Uh, as you saw in that picture just now, hidden from view by $50,000 worth of landscaping. These amendments are not needed. I think this will be the last question and we should call the question to prove a potential amendment to this ordinance. Yes, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Tepe here. Uh, I don't understand the, uh, the change from one to 10 or from one to 10 million. Um, yes. Speak with that. Yes, of course. Uh, there is a clause in the um, contract which says the seller would have a, a CG, a commercial general liability of $1 million. Oh. Uh, and then on an, in another part of the contract, it says they will draw from this policy any loss that they have for the panel. And the panels are more than a million dollars. So what, is, what are we left with? If we have a claim against the seller, where do we go? So, and this is a cheap policy. So instead of 1 million, it should be 10 million. That's what I'm saying. And number two, there is a, since we are at this topic, the contract uses the word that this policy will cover contractual liability. I don't believe CG covers contractual liability. That's a breach of contract. I don't think it covers. So I asked this question uh, to state attorney's office. Ms. 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 Mosser or Chody. The panel costs are actually covered in section um, 10 III of the lease form. Um, and that is an, no, in, no deductible shall exceed $10 million. So that's where your $10 million is coming from. The $1 million in the commercial general liability insurance is in accordance with the Kane County standards for our procurement documents and with our purchasing department. Um, both these sections have been reviewed by the state's attorney's office and approved. All right, are we ready? Uh, let's call the vote, please. And uh, this is, does everybody know what we're voting on? No. <laughs> Five things now. Look up the amendment. Motion to, to um, this is to amend the amendment and the suggestions are on the screen mm -hmm. and everybody can see those. Do we need to read them? You're fine? Yeah. Okay, go ahead, please. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Yes, Mr. Shepard. That, that is accurate. That is accurate on the entire <laughs> suggested amendment presented by Mr. Iqbal. <laughs> Madam Chair, I, 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 I don't think I, I completely understand this. We've gone through about three different things and added two at the end. Uh, I don't understand what's going through this. I, I don't ask for an answer. I'm going to say that this is the kind of thing that pulling the last minute out here, I agree with whoever said it, that changing this thing at the last minute is not appropriate. And I move to table. I second. Okay, it is now tabled. Second. Okay, thank you. Thank you.
without discussion. Yeah, with, with, with yeah. discussion. With discussion. Yeah. It's it, but uh, who, um, Strathman, Str Ms. Strathman. Okay, very good. Okay, so now, if we are all done. Yes. Thank yes. you. No, Thank I, you, I, Madam I'm Point of order. Uh, a point of order. The question. Oh, the question. Once it's tabled, no discussion. This. This. This has been tabled. The resolution has been. The well, we have to vote. The vote. amendment. Okay, yes. We're, we're um, ready to vote. So that would be okay. okay. I, if she comes in, she's a young one. Oh, just yeah. put her in. Motion. Have motion to. I'll be right. Thank you. All right. Okay, as I understand it, the amendment. This is to table the right. amendment the that amendment. was suggested by Mr. Iqbal and uh, Caius. Okay. Or I'm sorry, Kopi. Yeah. Kopi. Okay. Or it's tabled. Okay, okay, but now we have to vote and make sure that it's tabled. Yeah. Ready? Here goes. Ellen. Ellen, aye. Bates. Bates, aye. Berman. Berman. Yes. Brown. Brown, yes. Davis. Davis, yes. Ford? Yes. Raz? Yes. Gums? Yes. Iqbal? No. Kenyon? My God, yes. <laughs> Caius? Ditto. <laughs> yes. Kopi? Okay. Leonard? Leonard, yes. Lewis? Lewis, yes. Martin? Yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Shepro? Shepro, yes. Silva? Silva, yes. Strathman? Yes. Sergis? Tepe? Tepe, yes. Wallace? No. Winnicky? Yes. It passes. Okay. So it's tabled. All right, you've thrown me some curveballs. Let's see what we can do again. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. Now, I believe we are back again uh, to, um, is there any further discussion? That just go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really. and, and one more, and then Oh, no. That's it. Yes. I have a very brief, <laughs> a brief thought, but um, uh, I just have a suggestion for consideration, and I, I just want to present it to have it on record. This is not an amendment, but um, we are going to have quite a substantial savings uh, by putting in these solar panels, and I think our environmental and water resource department is extremely. Uh, important to our county and just I just want everybody all my fellow board members to tuck away the thought that um, some of these dollars I would like to see geared towards our environmental and our water resource department okay, okay. thank you Period. for those comments <laughs> you're welcome let's do it let's <laughs> let's 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 call the vote please okay this is the vote on the ordinance as amended. And remember, three quarters, correct? 18 are needed. Okay. Alan. Alan, aye. Bates. Bates, aye. Berman. Berman, yes. Brown. Brown, yes. Davis. Davis, yes. Ford. Yes. Raz. Yes. Gums. Yes. Iqbal. Iqbal, no. Berman. Yes. Caius. Caius, yes. Kopi. No. Leonard. Leonard, yes. Lewis. Lewis, yes. Martin. Yes. Molina. Molina, yes. Sanchez. Yes. Shepro. Shepro, yes. Silva. Silva. Uh -oh. Strathman. Yes. Sergis. Sergis, yes. Tepe. Tepe, yes. Wallace. No. Winnicky. Yes. It passes. Three nays. Yes. And uh, one who is absent. So that is a. So that's considered a no vote. Okay. Then they would. Okay. Or it's Silva, are you there? Doesn't. We don't need one. So it still passes yeah, at uh, passes. 20, 20 to 4. <clears throat> still passes. 20 to 3. Yes. Yeah, so. But when you need 18. Oh, okay. Oh, Everybody oh, stretch down to our next one. So I would like, before we move forward, I do want to thank all of our neighbors uh, and residents um, for their in, uh, information, their concern, their voices. Um, this is not the end of our discussion. Um, I guarantee you that you will be called upon um, frequently as this project gets developed. Uh, you'll be uh, part of the conversation with the landscaping. 
Um, we can see if you'd like to uh, see what the panel is like. Uh, we can even put it outside um, and call your attention to it at another time. So you can see it in midday um, and different. Eric, is that the panel you're going to need? Uh, and that's, uh, that's, it's, I'm, well, I'm, I'm sorry, you're order. out of order right now, ma'am. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, but we will be able to have the displays that are available for you. Why so thank you all. Thank you uh, truly all for your advocacy. All right. Madam so now Chair, we're... this is Dr. Silva, um, point of order. Uh, I want to make sure that my vote was recorded as yes. Oh, okay. Very good. Duly my, noted. My apology, technical difficulties. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Still passes. Still, still passes. Thank you very much. So it's three no's. Then. One to three. From what I have. One to three. All right, let's go on, please, uh, to item number uh, resolution 21 398. And I believe that is Mr. Martin. I'll move that. Well, Nikki seconds. Madam Chair, uh, during the course of the um, last week, there was correspondence received by some of us, I don't know if all of us, indicating uh, from a uh, union representative that in fact there were uh, potential issues with the contractor that, were, that we were uh, engaging, we were seeking to engage by this resolution. Um, I want to, in advance of the presentation, thank Jody Walnick and Scott Berger, uh, not only for their competence, but their diligence in uh, addressing these issues uh, and uh, all of us received, and some of us probably even haven't had a chance to see it, uh, a memo uh, in continued support of this resolution. But um, Ms. Walnick is here, and I would uh, defer to her to address the issues raised and or indicate how we've addressed the issues raised and conclude that we should go ahead uh, with this matter as originally proposed. Thank you. Ms. Walnick. I have some additional copies available if anyone would like one. <clears throat> it's in our mail. I want to also recognize Maria Calamia from purchasing and her hard work on uh, helping Mr. Berger and myself put together the memo. Um, on September 9th, the Chicago Laborers District Council sent a protest letter to several county board members regarding the pending award of the Ogden Gardens Water Trust tank and building contract. Per the county's purchasing ordinance, only a vendor who submitted a bid is available to purchase to pro protest. Um, therefore, the laborers union has no standing in the protest. However, we did want to provide some background information for the board to review uh, in regards to this item. You should know that the above contract represents uh, the first of a multi-phase effort to reconstruct the infrastructure necessary to provide reliable water for 122 homes in unincorporated Aurora Township. Approximately 70% of the area is low to moderate income. And the Water Resource Department and Commu Office of Community Reinvestment have been coordinating with the Ogden Gardens Water Trust to undertake this critically important project. As the project is reliant on federal community development funding, it must comply with federal procurement and contracting standards. Upon receipt of the bid tabulation for the tank and building contract, the Office of Community Reinvestment confirmed that integral construction has not been placed on a federal government's list of entities, companies, and individuals that have been declared ineligible to receive federal funding. In addition, myself and my team contacted the references for integral construction, and all we received were positive comments on their work. Water Resources, the Office of Community Reinvestment and Purchasing reviewed the documentation provided in the protest letter and found that the violations were isolated incidents and that Integral had paid all restitution and fines. We have both confirmed that the cases were subsequently closed and that Integral Construction is in good standing with the Illinois Secretary of State and the Illinois Department of Labor. Due to the urgency of the tank replacement at the Ogden Gardens Water Trust and the approaching end of the construction season, staff held a pre-construction meeting on September 9th to ensure everything was in place with the contract. Myself and the Water Trust spent considerable time with Integral's team and were very impressed with their expertise. They brought up... Oh. 
They brought up many means and methods that they intended to employ with the project, as well as uh, difficulties in working on infrastructure that dates back to the 1920s, including the challenge of removing a below grade rusted steel door frame that was structurally supporting the well house. Because this project relies on community development funding and a number of provisions have been incorporated in the contract, the Office of Community Reinvestment staff has have reviewed those provisions with company representatives. Integral will be required to submit weekly certified payroll reports for all laborers and mechanics on the job and periodically the Office of Community Reinvestment will conduct on-site payment payroll interviews with employees of both Integral and their subcontractors to ensure compliance with federal labor standards and Davis-Bacon wage requirements. The Office of Community Reinvestment's procedures require compliance with these standards prior to the issuance of any payments. In conclusion, Water Resources, the Office of Community Reinvestment and Purchasing have determined that there is no basis for disqualifying integral construction as the lowest responsive responsible bidder for this contract. Further, we believe that rejecting integral's bid would be improper under federal procurement standards and would jeopardize the use of federal assistance for the project. Finally, we want to ensure you that all necessary enforcement mechanisms are in place to ensure compliance with labor and wage requirements on this contract, and therefore staff recommends approval of 21-398. And I would ask if um, Director Berger has any additional comments to that, who is online. Good morning, uh, Jody and members of the county board. This is Scott Berger. I just want to uh, reaffirm the statements that Jody has made this morning. Uh, my office has been fully involved in this uh, proceeding, and we concur with her statements this morning. Thank you. Any Manager other Brown, Brown with a comment. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Brown. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to make a comment here that uh, I, I absolutely concur with what staff is recommending here. I was one of the board members, I think, that received the uh, letter from the Laborers Council. And I want to point out that it was Thursday evening that I, or Thursday late afternoon that I received that. And at that point, I contacted Jody Wolnick and uh, forwarded it on to her. And I just want to point out that in the matter of what is essentially two business days, which would have been Friday and Monday, because today's Tuesday, they did this research. They contacted the, the um, uh, proposed uh, contractor and have come up with this conclusion. And I think for them to do this when uh, by, in fact, we're not even required to entertain this letter of protest because the protest did not come from another bidder, I think says an awful lot about our staff. So they've done their work, they've done it very well, and I am very supportive of awarding this contract. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Hearing no other questions. Madam Chair, I would like to speak on the matter. Dr. Silva, um, I am the board representative for Ogden Gardens. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Ms. Silva, um, could you speak to that again, please? Yes, um, no, I, I'm the board representative that rep I'm the, a board member that represents the Ogden Gardens area. And what I would like to say is that this is an area that has had a history of flooding issues, significant flooding issues for about 15 years. And that is when I first started working with Ogden Gardens on this, on, on various projects to alleviate some of these issues. Um, I did receive the letter late in the day on Thursday and my main concern, as you know, and some of the board members um, with whom I've already spoken uh, know, was to not reward bad behavior with government contracts. Um, I have done, I spent a number of hours uh, yesterday doing research and talking to staff, and I am comfortable moving forward for a number of reasons. Um, we, Although personally, I would have liked to table the matter, I feel that we need to move forward because we cannot jeopardize the water source for the individuals in Ogden Gardens. So I am moving forward in support of this, but I have also made myself available to anyone who would like to visit the site. I will go with them to make sure that we are following any proper procedures. Um, and that is not to say, <clears throat> 
that the company that we're working with is not going to. I just think it's a good practice uh, to be to be mindful and watchful uh, of these important practices. And as my peer, my peer uh, Commissioner Molina said, the laws weren't put in place to limit small business or to make anyone feel inadequate or be or or like they're being judged. They're just there to ensure fair practices. So um, I would I would. Um, like to vocalize those things and thank you for the time. Okay, thank you. Mr. Kaios? I just want to, I'll echo what uh, Ms. Silva said. I started some, some of the similar line like that. I think that the, what, the, what Jody and the uh, department have done seems to be equitable and thorough and I, I, I believe we can support it. We need to make sure that we have follow up on it. Oh, yes. And I'm sure they will. They will, well, they're required to. Madam Chair, this is Scott Berger, may I speak? Yes, Mr. Berger. I want to assure the county board that as my office implements uh, projects that are funded under the community development program, um, we correctly apply the applicability of the Davis-Bacon Act to all of the work that we do. What that means is that for most non-residential construction work that we fund, we apply the federal, the appropriate federal prevailing wage rates to the job, and we do two things, and these were summarized by Director Walnick. Um, we require that the general and all subcontractors submit to us weekly certified payrolls, and we review those payrolls, and we also follow up with on-site job interviews, under which we actually interview the individual employees that are on the job site, and we ask them about their wages, we ask them about their job responsibilities, we make certain that they are being paid the appropriate federal prevailing wage for their job classification. This is not an unusual circumstance. This is something that we do year in and year out for virtually all non-residential construction work that we fund. So I just wanna reassure the board that we're not going above and beyond. We are simply applying the rules as they apply to this project and we're administering those rules appropriately. And we would do that regardless of whether this uh, was a, a subject of your discussion or not. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Berger. <clears throat> All questions have been answered. Um, hearing no other, please call the roll. Ellen. Allen. Aye. Bates. Yeah, aye. Berman. Berman, yes. Brown. Brown, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Ford? Yes. Raz? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Kopi? Kopi, no. Leonard? Um, Leonard says yes. Where is he? Can he's, he vote? No, well, he just wanted to That's let, cool. he's Kopi. not here, but he's in supportive of it in absentia. Well, Lewis? Lewis, yes. Martin? Yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Pro. Chapro, yes. Silva? Silva, yes. Rathman? Uh, yes. Sergis? Tepe? Tepe, yes. Wallace? Yes. Winicky? Yes. Passes. Passes. Very good. The next item is 21-409. May I have um... Madam Chair Sergis here? I invite Jamie Labrillo to stand. Yeah. Podium. Yes, but I believe we have to have a motion to uh, to move this to the. No problem. Move them. Resolution. Thank you. And a second, please. Sergis. Sergis. Okay. Thank you. Jamie, go ahead. Were there questions? Were there questions regarding the? Uh, resolution establishing Juneteenth as a holiday. Uh, Mr. Kopi called it, uh, pulled it out. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I just didn't want this uh, this resolution to be uh, conveniently obscured by a consent protocol. Uh, as we know, Thomas Jefferson is probably the most unlikely candidate available to author the United States Constitution. And by fate, he uh, inherited um, 
uh, roughly 40,000 acres of land through, uh, through um, uh, extended family and his wife's side of the family. And in lieu of that transaction, the, uh, or in, in effect of that transactions, uh, he inherited uh, approximately 400 slaves. The holiday. Hi. Gives... Don't mind giving me about five, 10 minutes. I'm going to clean out the room. <laughs> Monica, you're not on mute. <laughs> the holiday gives credence to the document of the Constitution and the Constitution being the basis of the Bill of Rights, which was a direct effect of the anti-federalist movement. When the North was in imminent danger of losing the war, uh, civil war at the expense of hundreds of thousands of lives in the midst of the carnage, Abraham Lincoln authored the Emancipation Proclamation, which revived the fortitude for the American people to carry on at a continued expense of hundreds and thousands of more soldiers' lives. And they ultimately, uh, and ultimately being victorious, creating an irrefutable bond between free men and the Constitution of the United States. The black man is exposed to extreme prejudices simply because he or she is black. But know this that all Americans had become cemented in freedom because they were black. Thank you. Madam Chair. Uh, yes. Uh, Shepro, uh, today is the, the 14th day of September. And we heard during Forest Preserve that I think it was uh, uh, be kind to of a dog day, but uh, uh, more relevant to this uh, motion, uh, I would note that uh, in the early morning hours of September 14th, 1814, uh, the HMS uh, His Majesty's Vessels, Volcano Terror Devastation, and the rocket ship Erebus ordered a ceasefire when at dawn they noted that the flag of the United States was still flying mm -hmm. over Fort McHenry. I think it is appropriate, therefore, that on this date, we redeem the promise that was made in those uh, stirring words and adopt this resolution. That was lovely. Very nice. All right, are we ready to call the question? Let's <clears throat> call the roll. Ellen? Ellen, aye. Bates? Bates, aye. Berman? Berman, yes. Brown? Brown, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Raz? Yes. Gums? Yes. Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Hopi? Yes. Leonard's not here. <coughs> Lewis? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Shepro? Shepro, yes. Silva? Silva with another emphatic yes. Thank you. Strathman, another emphatic yes. Sergis. Sergis, yes. Teppi. Teppi, yes. Wallace. Wallace, yes. Hornicky. Yes. Okay. Unanimously. That is, uh, we're now on to just several more and uh, almost done. Uh, may I have a... May I have a motion and a second to approve item uh, resolution number 21-415. I just move. I just Wallace move. second. Wallace, okay, very good. Any discussion on this? Yes. Ms. Madam, Madam Chairman, uh, this is a, a right away, uh, prior, I shouldn't say right away, it's a real estate acquisition uh, under the category of Long Meadow Parkway. What's a little unusual about it is we're not actually acquiring property for the road, we're acquiring property to uh, compensate the forest preserve for land that was impacted during construction. So uh, this is a parcel that will be turned over to the forest preserve. I believe. And despite my earlier vote, I concur that I will do whatever I can to improve the forest preserve. <laughs> uh, but, but 
plate. I, I want to point out that this was attached to a, a, a project that in my area is, is not very popular, I think is regressive taxes and, and is sunsetted. Just that's my big, it's sunsetted. Remember that board members, we're sunsetting this toll. And what percent of the toll goes to the toll company? I say 40. I thought you'd say the, that. The correct answer, however, is 30. Percent, <laughs> I still wouldn't ask my kid to get a credit card with 30% interest. Okay. I do, right, I do feel obligated to say that uh, seven communities up there passed resolutions asking us to build the bridge and we're almost done. And, okay, gentlemen, please. Thank you very much. It's off topic. We're talking about land acquisition. Anybody else? Hearing none, please call the roll. Bates. Yes. Right. Uh, Berman. Minute. Berman. Yes. Brown. Hold on. Yes. Hold on a second. Sure. Who's I, waiting a minute? This is Alan. I didn't hear my name called. Oh, yes. sorry. I did. Um, Alan. Alan. Anything for the forest preserve? <laughs> Aye. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Brown. Brown. Yes. Davis. Since Caius moved it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Board? Yes. Braz. Gums. Yes. Iqbal. Iqbal, yes. Kenyon. Oh, he's gone. I'm sorry. Caius? Caius, yes. Okay. Kopi. Sorry, Leonard's not here. Lewis. Lewis, yes. Martin. Yes. Molina. Molina, yes. Sanchez. Yes. Chepro. Relying on Mr. Caius's careful research, I vote <laughs> yes. <laughs> Silva? Silva, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Sturgis? Just too easy, yes. Tepe? <laughs> Since Caius voted yes, I will join Mr. Caius. <laughs> Wallace? Yes. Ann Winicky? Yes. And it passes. <clears throat> Oh. No good deed goes unpunished, Chris. <laughs> Thanks for the consistency. Uh, May I have a motion and a second uh, to approve uh, ordinance number 21-416? Alan moves. Berman second. Thank you. Is there any discussion on this? Yes. Madam Chair, I was I was wondering if name, the please, state's name, please. Tepe here. I was, I was wondering if the state's attorney could have, uh, in any way, shape, or form, made the um, thirty-eight pages that are associated with this uh, reach fifty pages, perhaps. Then I would not be justified in taking my salary. So no. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any serious questions? <laughs> Madam Chair, this is Alan. Uh, yes, Ms. Alan. Thank you. I just wanted to thank Joe Anza for always being on the lookout for ways to save us money. He is uh, carrying the financial responsibility for the county, and yet we, we call on him to um, do the financing for the multi-use building. Uh, we call on him when we have questions about our bond rating, and here is... Uh, an opportunity for us to save some money. And I'm, I'm just grateful. I wanted to say thanks. Thank you. Yeah. And he appreciates that recognition, surely, as we all recognize and give him thanks. Anything else? Please call the roll. Ellen? Allen? Bates? Bates, aye. Berman? Berman, yes. Brown? Brown, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Ford? Yes. Raz? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Yes. Caius? Yes, yes. Opie? Yes. Uh, Lewis? Lewis, yes. Martin? Yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Chepro? Chepro, yes. Silva? Silva, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Sturgis? Sturgis, yes. Tepe? Tepe, yes. Wallace? Winicky? Yes. It passes. Oh, very nice. We have no need for executive session, oh. and we <laughs> we have we have my favorite. Please, sir. Oh, I would like to move that we adjourn. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Mr. Davos. Second by Davos. Okay. Oh, All, in favor? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Maybe young, but opposed. Have a great day. Here.